My name is John Dietrich. I'm a former Clark County Commissioner and I'm going to cover four areas today. I'm going to go over a brief history of Clark County. I'm going to go over uh, railroads in Clark County. I'm going to go over some unique features of Clark County and some of the things that we like to do that rank us in the country as one of the best. So let's get started here with the history of Clark County. The first settlers here came because of this. We have valuable furs throughout the area. The fur trappers came, they liked what they saw, and they eventually came back and settled. One of our historical marks was 1780. West of town, there was a Shawnee Indian tribe. And it was a large settlement, but there was conflict between the Indians here and in Kentucky. As a result of this, a gentleman by the name of George Rogers Clark came here and fought a battle of Piqua in 1780, and it helped to set the stage for these trappers to come in and later come back and settle here. Springfield, Ohio was incorporated about the same time as the state of Ohio, 1803. 1818, Clark County was formed. To the south, there was a general down by Clifton who was in the American Revolution, and he wanted to stay in Greene County, but where he lived south of Clifton, he had enough influence that he moved our southern boundary north. If we hadn't had that happen, all of Clifton, instead of half of it, would be in Clark County, all of Yellow Springs, and most importantly, Fairborn, which includes Wright-Patterson Air Force, would have been all part of Clark County. So it's funny how history affects things. But in 1818, that's what happened to help form our boundary. In 1818, we had to decide where the county seat was going to be. There was Springfield, Ohio on Buck Creek. And west of town, there was a little place called New Boston, right where George Rogers Park is today. And the vote was three to two to make the county seat in Springfield which was a very wise move because it didn't take into account floodplains and New Boston periodically flooded. So Springfield benefited from that decision and that's how it became the county seat and it still is today. Population Springfield 60,000 today, the population of the county total is 134. Uh, we're a very unique county. We're in the top 15 in agriculture, which is very special because we're only 81st in geographical size. That means there's 80 counties bigger than us and only seven smaller than us of the 88 counties. So we're well blessed with agriculture here. And that's a brief history of what happened in Clark County to start. Now let's go to railroads. Clark County was very well blessed with the National Road, which is today Interstate 70, and we have a second interstate highway, which everybody forgets, 675 has two miles in Clark County down here by Enon. But railroads were the lifeblood of the area when this was transitioning in 1850 to 1900. And we had, on an average day, 150 trains coming in and out of Springfield. We were one of the top manufacturing spots for agriculture in the world. The McCormick Reaper was made here by what was the early International Harvester, and in 1901 they transitioned to trucks. But today we still have six railroad lines going out of Clark County. Uh, we don't go to Yellow Springs anymore, and we don't go to New Carolina, but we've got Mechanicsburg, Urbana, Troy, Dayton, South Charleston and Columbus. So the train played a major role here. In fact, we just built a new downtown hospital in Springfield. And if you've ever lived by a railroad track, there's a federal law that as a train approaches every intersection, it has to announce that it's coming. In Springfield, we had this hospital and people couldn't sleep. We did some research and were the first community to have a quiet zone in our downtown. If you've ever been near a railroad track in the middle of the night, the sequence of whistles for a train is too long, a short, and a long. I'm 
I did that a little quicker. It usually goes on over a minute, but I don't want to bore you with the train whistle. So we gated certain gates and we put a little whistle out there that went out a half block and the trains don't honk when they approach that intersection and we closed other intersections. People come in from all over the world to see what we did to make trains silent. Let's go now to um, some unique features of Clark County. Northridge, community of 12,000 north of Springfield. It's unincorporated, which means they have no bureaucracy. It's a very affordable community. In fact, they're in the top five in the last couple years in unique livable communities in the United States. They have low crime, reasonable taxes, and good quality of life and schools. So we were really well blessed uh, to have them in our community. Another thing that the community is blessed with is underneath us is the Taze Valley. It is a large aquifer and it's actually a large river. We will never run out of water in Clark County. In a couple hundred years, when they're trying to find out where to get their water in some of the more areas where there is rapid growth, it's going to be a benefit to us because of this Taze Valley. North of town, we have 12 wells from the city of Springfield that pump this water, and they can do a thousand gallons a minute. So we have a very good water supply, and our name even came from springs throughout Springfield. And for instance, in back of the Old Shooter's Bakery on East Main, there's an underground spring. You go to George Rogers Clark Park and walk along the trails, I can show you two or three spots out west of town where the water still freely runs out into streams. So we're blessed with a lot of water here. Another area that we're blessed with is we have the number one tourist attraction in the Miami Valley, Young's Jersey Dairy. They're out south of town here and they have 1.2 million visitors a year. No other attraction in the Miami Valley, that's from Piqua to Middletown to the Indiana border over to London, can do what Young's Jersey Dairy does. And they pay taxes. The second largest tourist attraction is the Air Force Museum down at Fairborn, and it gets an $11 million subsidy. So yay Young's, yay Clark County. Um, another great feature we have as I mentioned, our interstate highway system. We also are a hub for about six roads that come into Springfield, which have helped their growth also. Um, we're a day's drive time to 60% of the United States and Canada from right here, so we get a lot of distribution businesses in this area. One of our claims to fame is also the Clark County Fair. It's one of the top five fairs in the United States. It's number one in the sale of farm animals by youth in the, United, in the state of Ohio. So we're well blessed there. Tied in with that, we are also number one in the Midwest in preserving farmland. We've got over 13,000 acres that will always stay farmland. The farmers can sell it, but they can't subdivide it. And we are a leader in preserving farms for the future of our uh, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. We're also the birthplace of 4-H in 1902 in the A.B. Graham building, which is presently being remodeled at the corner of uh, Limestone and Columbia Street. 4-H was founded there, and it's all over the United States. So those are just some of the unique things that make us a special place. Now let's conclude here with Clark Countyans like to look good, we like to repair things, and we like to eat. We've got the top great clips of the whole chain in the United States over on Bechtel Avenue. That's our looking good. In a repair area, we got one of the busiest Lowe's and Home Depot's in the area, and everybody goes there from all over the region because even Urbana and Greene County to come and uh, use our repair products. Out on Interstate 70 by the fairgrounds, we got one of the busiest love truck stops in the United States. I said we like to eat. Boy, do we. We've got the fourth busiest Texas Roadhouse in the Midwest, and if you doubt me, go there for uh, rush hour in the evening, and you'll see usually you have to wait. 
We've got one of the busiest Popeye chickens out on South Limestone. I already mentioned Young's Jersey Dairy. Up on uh, Home Road, we've got Tropical Smoothies. He's one of the busiest franchises per capita of all those in the United States. He does a great business up there. And he, he has a drive through which enhances him also. I'd like to conclude with the fact that we have downtown Winans. They have a number of franchises throughout the area, but this is one of their busiest. So I hope I've left you with some positive things about Clark County. Things are going well. We do a lot of things, and we just do them quietly and get the job done. Thank you for listening to me. John Dietrich.